Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here with a Birch Press Design Team Project and for this one I'm going to use one of their stamp sets. I am absolutely in love with this stamp set. It's so, I mean, the only way I can say it is simple. It's just leaves. Um, there's two different sizes um, and that one section there with the leaves on the top and the bottom, that is one stamp. And then you have a smaller box that's on the bottom with a leaf that's coming off of it. This is called Grateful Leaf Frames. So what I'm going to do now, you're seeing some alcohol markers, um, the Arteza ones off to the right. I changed my mind, which it's what I always do. I did grab a piece of craft card stock and I'm using my ink on three fade out ink. I wanted to do to do some colored pencil. <laughs> That's what this ends up being. Um, just no line coloring. Um, colored pencils are my medium of choice. And the colored pencils that I'm going to use are by Arteza. Um, I'm really liking these the more and more that I do use them. So I'm going to zoom in on this. You can see very close. This is going to be a little lengthy of a video, but I do keep all of the coloring in, um, even though it is sped up. So one of the things that I do when it comes to my color pencils is I always make a swatch um, using the same cardstock, of course, that I'm about to color on. Um, I usually do like a cardstock. Um, or paper that's got a little bit more tooth when I use my colored pencils. Um, and that's usually my favorite is the Strathmore Mix Media, either toned gray, blue, or tan. Um, but I really didn't want to use anything that, um, that thick. Um, I, I actually wanted to try to use um, this craft cardstock. And if you're hearing that laughing in the background, I am so sorry. That would be my husband. Oh my goodness. So I chose my colors. You can see I have pear, moss, and sage. Now the one blue, I say no. Um, and then I have a black. You can use that blue, even though I said no, it would be fine. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a layer of my light color first. Then I'm coming in with the medium, which is the moss. And then I'm coming in with the darkest, which is the sage. Now, I do like the color combination that I did choose. Although I do wish I put a little bit of that blue off of the bottom of those leaves um, just to give it a little bit more depth. Don't be afraid when you're using your colored pencils to use a color that you don't think you would use to give a shadow or give depth. Um, for greens, I do like to go to a dark blue or a black um, for, my per for my reds. I like to go to a deep purple or a deep or dark blue, sometimes even black. Don't be afraid of that black to add your shading. It's not like you're going to um, go heavily with it. You're just adding a light tint with those darker colors. I like to work in layers when it comes to my colored pencils. I actually, I, I kind of, I use colored pencils as if somebody else that is a Copic or an alcohol marker colorist. You know, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes when you use your alcohol markers, you lay down your light color first, then you come in with your dark, then you come in with your mid, and then if you have another mid, and then you come back in with your light. I kind of do that process when it comes to my colored pencils. I do like to put a very light color or a very light layer of my lightest color down. That could be my white because that can give you your highlights. In this case, I'm using the pear, the lightest green as my highlight. 
Um, I could have come in with white to add a little bit more, but I did want to keep the earthy look of these greens. So you can see what the beauty of colored pencils is you can do all of your first layer over your image, wherever that may be. Then come in with your medium all over each of the images. Then come in with your dark and so forth. Sometimes when you're using um, alcohol markers, you know, you can only work on a small section at a time because to work with them, you want the, pa uh, the paper saturated with the ink. With color pencils, you don't have to worry about that. You're not trying to saturate the paper. But if you do press hard right away, you can get a layer of wax. In this case, I'll say wax. The, the Faber-Castell polychromos are oil-based. Um, nine out of ten, your colored pencils are wax-based, your Prismacolors. And I believe the Artezas are, but I'm not sure, but I believe they are. Never checked it. Colored pencils are my medium of choice. So, um, to me, it, it doesn't matter. I like working with both the wax and the oil. I don't see a difference. I don't notice a difference. So you can see I have, back to the car, you can see I have those leaves done on the upper corner there. Now I'm working on the frame. We've kind of got this double frame that shifted. So I'm using my black and I'm just using this one color to get the gradient that I want along the sides. I want the corners coming out to be darker and I want it to go lighter to get to the center. Then I'm going to use the espresso. That's the brown. That's the branch that's holding the leaves that I used. Then I'm going to come in with that color on the thinner frame that's coming around this piece. Again, just to give it that difference, um, that difference in the tone. But again, I don't want to add too many colors. Um, when I work with my colored pencils, I keep those pencils off to the side until I know I'm finished for two reasons. One, so I can make you all a color, a color chart. <laughs> which will be available <laughs> on my blog, and you will be able to see it. Uh, just so I can write down the colors, the colors that I've used, in case you're interested um, with this color, this color palette that I've put together. Um, the other reason is I try to limit the number of colors that I'm using. We have these vast numbers in these sets. Um, with the Artezas, I believe this is a 72 colored pencil set. That's a lot of colors. Um, but you can, just by pulling, the out, pulling them out, you can limit yourself so that you can blend, so that you can build on your bases, so that you can get your color theme. You don't have to have every shade of green. By putting two colors together, you're getting blends and you can get blends. So that's another reason why I tend to keep those off to the side and try to stay with those. I really don't like to pull in other colors. So knowing that my sentiment that I was going to stamp, which I'm absolutely in love with the sentiment, just saying, um, I knew I knew I didn't want to use a black, but I knew I wanted to use a gray. Again, there's very soft colors going on here. They're very earthy. That's, that's what I'm referring to them as, as earthy. Um, I didn't want to have this stark black or this dark brown stamped for my sentiment. So by using the black in that frame and keeping it light, not going too heavy with it, that isn't something that that would actually in my opinion, turn into my focal point because it would be so stark black. So you'll see what I mean when we get to the sentiment. You can tell I'm moving along with these leaves the same way that I did the top. That's why I wasn't explaining it. Again, the light color down first, the mid-tone comes up, 
and then I'm bringing in that dark shade down in the corner. And then when I'm using that brown up onto the branch, I'm actually coming up onto that leaf a little bit as if it's got the holding point, the anchor um, for that leaf coming off that branch. And again, it's just a little bit. I want to make sure that if my leaves were crossing that I added the shading around the top leaf so that the one at the below was a little bit darker. So stamped the image, life isn't perfect. And the color that I used was a gray and that was from uh, Altenew called Industrial Diamond. So I also used my elephant gray from my colored pencils just to go inside of that and go around the leaves just to add some shading into the corners to make this panel stick out. I pulled out a piece of black cardstock so that that could be my frame, my mat that this piece is going to sit on. Now you can see this is not the typical standard A2 size card. Um, this is a card that measures about five and a half by, and I'm sitting here measuring it as I go, by six. No, yes, by six. So very odd shaped card. Um, and that's okay because when I put this down after cutting my card base, I'm going to cut my card base to be six by 11 and then I'm going to score it at five and a half. I'm just going to use my cutter to do that scoring. Um, I will have some of the olive green color cardstock that I have here at the top and the bottom, and that black will cover up from side to side. I just wanted a hint of those colors so that it could accent the colors of the leaves that I did there. And then I'm just going to trim around the edges. I will prop this up using some fun foam and my liquid adhesive. And then I'm just going to trim that down onto that card base. So again, it's not the standard A2 size card base. That's top folding. Um, this is actually a side folding, <laughs> which is very odd for me. Very strange. I usually, I don't do too many side folding cards. I don't know why. I just gravitate to the um, top folding. It's just something I did. And once that's trimmed, um, I'm now going to just add a few um, Nouveau drops and I'm using the chocolate chip in the vintage, which these will dry matte. And I love the look that they give and I thought the chocolate chip was perfect and matched perfectly to the color that I chose for the branches. So just a few in clusters of three that'll sit around the card. So I do hope you enjoy today's project using the Grateful Leaf Frames Stand Set by Birch Press Design. All of the products that I used will be listed down below in the um, video description and again the color chart will be available on my blog and that link will be down below as well if you have any questions or comments please leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can thank you so much for stopping by if you haven't already I'd love for you to subscribe make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next video is out and live hope everyone's having a great day, but always remember what's most important always be creative